Welcome back to the channel. This week we're going to talk about giant cell arteritis. Giant cell arteritis is basically a vasculitis that affects medium and large walled arteries, characterized by granulomatous inflammation. The most common type, cranial GCA, also known as temporal arteritis, is when one of the extracranial branches of the carotid or the ophthalmic arteries are affected, typically the ciliary branches. It's relatively common, with certain studies suggesting that a full-time GP is likely to see a new case every one to two years. It's typically more common in women, and rare in those under the age of 50, with Caucasian or patients from Scandinavian countries seemingly more at risk. Typically, patients present with a new onset pulsatile headache, usually over the temporal location, but this can vary, with temporal artery thickness or tenderness only really noted in about 30% of people. People often go on to develop unilateral visual loss or visual defects such as double vision or colour vision impairment. Patients will also have some scalp tenderness and some jaw claw occasion and commonly present with non-specific constitutional symptoms such as low-grade fever, anorexia or weight loss. As you may remember from medical school, there is an overlap with polymyalgia rheumatica with 40% of people with giant cell arteritis also having polymyalgia rheumatica symptoms. Managing temporalgia should be seen as a medical emergency, with early treatment of steroids needed to prevent permanent visual loss and disability. If there is visual involvement, urgent ophthalmology assessment is often required, with steroids used as a holding measure until they are seen. If no visual changes are seen, then urgent rheumatological assessment should be sought, with high-dose steroids, usually between 40 to 60 mg of prednisolone a day, often commenced, usually to continue for a period of years. Bloods, including a full blood count, CRP and ESR, could be considered, but they shouldn't delay your treatment, with a formal diagnosis often done by secondary care with biopsies. In terms of complications, peepin often can develop visual loss given the involvement of the ophthalmic arteries. There is also a significant cardiovascular risk, with 10 to 20% of patients being at risk of developing aortic aneurysms or dissections, as well as an increased risk of cardiovascular diseases such as strokes, myocardial infarcts, and heart failure. Generally, however, patients respond quite rapidly to steroids and temporal arteritis, provided there is early intervention. And steroids, as mentioned, are often used for one to two years, sometimes even longer. However, relapses can occur in up to about 50% of patients typically when we're lowering or weaning steroid doses. And that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed today's video on giant cell arteritis slash temporal arteritis. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below and please share it amongst your colleagues. Please head over to www.dorkydocs.com for loads more information and be sure to check out all the other videos we have on our channel. But otherwise, we'll see you in the next video.